So yesterday we looked at look we looked at bond energies and from our bond energies we could calculate the energy in a reaction. So you were able to calculate how many bonds were broken, how many bonds were made, take one figure from the other, and that gave you delta H, and we were all pretty happy with that by the end of the day. That's fine. So that's all theoretical. We, I'm giving you numbers. You're just working out on your calculators. Everything's fine. How do we actually do it in the lab? So we're going to look at how we would find out the energy um, produced in a chemical reaction. So we're going to find delta H from experimental values. So this is how, in theory, you would do it. You get yourself a little spirit burner, and in there is where you put your fuel that you're going to burn. In here you have water, so which you have to measure out. So let's say we've got 100 grams of water. That's just a retort stand to hold up. And then this is normally a copper can, something like that. So we, we'll do this uh, next term. What you would do is you would measure the temperature of the water, so that is your thermometer there. You measure the temperature before you light your fuel. So say, let's measure it, the temperature at the start, we could say was maybe 20 degrees C. We then light the fuel, like so. That will produce energy. It's an exothermic reaction. That heats up the water. The water goes up in temperature. And uh, maybe after we burnt it, the temperature at the end is 30 degrees C. From that information, we can calculate how much energy was produced by the fuel, because all the energy that came out from the fuel has gone into heat the water. So in physics, hopefully you've looked at specific heat capacity yeah. of water. So we can use that information. So I can say energy released and what do we what do we measure energy in? Energy is measured in. Oh uh, yeah, uh, in this one the, it actually comes out in joules, and we're going to convert it to kilojoules. Is the mass of water? So mass of water times the specific heat capacity of water, and times delta T. So that's your temperature change. So in this example the energy released will be the mass of water, which is 100 grams. The specific heat capacity, 4.2, times your temperature change, which for us is 10, 10 degrees. So if you times all those values together, you would get the energy released. Okay, so if you times all that together, you get 4,200 joules. As we said, we normally use energy in kilojoules, so that is equal. So at that point, you divide it by a thousand. So that is um, equal to four point two kilojoules. That's fine. What do we mean? when we were doing energy changes last lesson? What did we always quote our values in? We quoted it in kilojoules per mole. Per mole. So what do I need to find out? I need to find out how much. Yeah, how much fuel I burn. So how could I do that? Well. What I could have done is weighed the spirit burner at the beginning and then weighed it at the end and the difference would have been the fuel that I burned. So let's pretend the fuel is ethanol. Ethanol has the formula uh, C2H5OH. And let's pretend I find that I burnt one gram of fuel. How do I convert mass into moles? Moles is mass divided by molar mass. So the mass of fuel that I burnt was one gram. The molar mass of ethanol, the molar mass of ethanol is 46. Uh, 212 is 24, plus 16, 40. 46, yeah. So 1 divided by 46, can someone tell me what that comes to? Can't you keep it as a fraction? Yeah. No, I don't like it. Oh, yeah, as a fraction. Yeah. 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 Uh, 0 0.02173. 0 0.02173. Okay. 
So that's the moles of ethanol <coughs> that I burn. So how can I convert these two figures into delta H? Divide the 4.2 by the 0 0.0217. Yeah, so delta H is energy uh, released divided by moles of fuel that were burned. So energy released is 4.2. The moles of fuel burned was 0 0.0217. And so that comes to... Um, 4.2 divided by 0 0.0217. Um, 193.5. Kilojoules per mole. So that's your answer. So uh, there's a couple of things. First of all, delta H, is this an exo endothermic reaction? It's exothermic, so my temperature's gone up. So what, what um, sign do you always put in front of an exothermic? Is it negative or plus? It's negative. So actually, delta H is minus 193.5 kilojoules per mole. So you put that minus, and that minus tells me. People often say, how do I know this is exo-endothermic? Well, the temperature's gone up, so it's got to be exothermic. The other thing is that this isn't a very good experiment because you lose not all the energy that was produced by the fuel has gone into the water. Where else could the energy have gone? Yeah. Gone into the air. It's also gone into heating the copper can up, hasn't it, as well? So it's been lost to the air. You've probably got a draft. So you can improve it. Um, and the one that you've got in your on your handout, can you see it's in a little uh, container? So it's stop, it's excluding drafts and things like that. So that's a slightly better. This isn't ideal. The other thing is you have to um, be careful of is how high is this above the flame. What's the other thing? There's two types of combustion that can happen. Spontaneous. Oh well, that would be unlike. Well, that would be <laughs> unfortunate if, if someone spontaneously combusts. Um, what about, what are your two types of combustion? There's complete combustion, incomplete combustion. This is, this is assuming that I've probably got complete, if I went through that, I've had, I've, I've probably got some incomplete combustion happening as well. What, what, what's the colour of a flame for incomplete combustion? Yellow, why is it yellow? Carbon. Yeah, it's the carbon in the, that's what gives you the nice yellow flame. So that's in your Bunsen burner. Do you remember in the Bunsen burner when you've got your air hole fully open, you get the blue flame because that's complete combustion happening. If you close your air hole, you have a yellow flame, which is more what we're familiar with combustion. That's because you've got incomplete combustion and that's the carbon being produced as well.